In this video today, I'll be showing you how you can download Kali Linux and create a bootable USB. I'll also demonstrate how you can boot this from a Windows computer as well as a MacBook Air. Having a bootable USB as a pen tester has many advantages. Firstly, it's a non destructive method of pen testing, as you will not be making any changes to the host hard drive. As soon as you have finished running different penetration tests, you'll be able to restart the computer and you'll be able to run the standard operating system that was installed before you carried out the penetration tests. In order to get started today, you're going to need to have two things open in your browser. Number one is going to be the Kali.org downloads link. And the second one is going to be the Lina Etcher, which I'm going to be using to flash the ISO image onto our bootable USB. So firstly, I've already downloaded this file and you'll be able to see that I have my Kali Linux live ISO image here. You can download it using the second link and it's gonna be the 64-bit live image. As I said, I'm using Belina Etcher to also image this. So I'm gonna open up my software here. And what I'm going to do is select the ISO file that I'm going to image. And once I have done that, I'm going to plug in my USB. Once you've inserted your USB and you have selected your image from your downloads file, you'll be able to select on select target and choose your USB. You may have an error message similar to mine, which says this is a large drive and make sure it doesn't contain any files that you want to keep. You can just press on select as long as you are sure, select on flash and then select on yes, I am sure again. Now I'm not gonna select on this option as I have already imaged this onto the USB. What I'd like to show you next is what it would look like on the USB once it has finished flashing that image. You should have an EFI image and you should then have a boot image. Next up, we're gonna be having a look at how you would then get this to boot up using a MacBook Air. Once you have installed Kali Linux on a USB, you will need to plug in a USB-C adapter. If you don't have a USB port, unplug in Kali Linux with your USB installed. Once you've done that, you're going to need to click on the restart button on your Mac and you're going to need to hold down Command R. In order for you to continue to access utilities, you're going to need to enter the password for your account. And once you have entered your password, you will be taken to this screen here. At the top of the screen, you'll be able to find utilities and you need to select on the first option, which is Startup Security Utility. Now inside here, you're going to need to make some changes. Before we get to that section, you're going to need to enter your Mac OS password. And once you're in here, it's going to take you to a screen which allows you to select different options in the startup utility here. So by default, your Mac is going to be set to full security and it's going to be set to disallow booting from an external device. What you have to do is you need to select the last option underneath secure boot and you can select on no security and it says does not enforce any requirements on the bootable OS so it doesn't need to be a trusted operating system by Apple and you can select on allow booting from an external or removable media device. Once you have done this you'll be able to select on the Apple logo and press restart and then you need to hear, hold down the option key when you hear the chime and this is going to then allow you to select the EFI boot image which has been set up on the USB. Now I would recommend you uh, choose a network before continuing. So if you haven't chosen a network already, do set up uh, a Wi-Fi network just in case it does need to have an internet connection and then select on boot. When you get to this Kali Linux menu, you'll be able to boot it up in full safe mode, forensic mode, as well as a live system. I'm going to go for the default option of live system and press enter. And now you'll be able to see that we have officially loaded the Kali Linux OS on a MacBook Air and this has been booted from a USB. In the next part of this video, I'll be showing you how you can boot from a Dell laptop. 
on my Dell laptop when it restarts I'm going to hold down the F12 key and this should take me to my BIOS menu. Now once I'm inside my BIOS menu I'm going to have a look for the BIOS setup. So I'm going to scroll down to the option underneath other options and select BIOS setup here and when I'm inside this option I'm going to do two different things. Number one, inside boot sequence, I'm going to untick the Windows Boot Manager so I can boot from the SanDisk USB which is plugged in. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Secure Boot and I'm going to untick Secure Boot Enable. Now, once I've done this and then when I restart the computer, I'm just going to hold down F12 and this should allow me to boot directly from the USB. Now that it's restarting, I'm holding down F12 and it should automatically load Kali Linux now. And now you will be able to see that the Kali Linux menu has loaded. It's really important that when you are rebooting that you're not letting go of F12 because that is going to bring up the BIOS menu. By holding down F12, it will bring you up to this default screen on Kali Linux. Now, like in the last video with Mac, we are going to select on Live System. And it's going to run another couple of different options in here. And this should now take you through to the Kali Linux desktop. So we've just successfully booted from our Windows computer. This is a Dell laptop and we are running Kali Linux from the bootable USB. To finish off this video today, I wanted to direct Mac users to this link here. If you are trying to set up a bootable Kali USB and run it on Mac, this article is really, really helpful here. This is how I set up my startup security utility and managed to boot my MacBook Air from the bootable USB which we set up. Looking forward to seeing all of you in our next ethical hacking video soon.